And we are back, guys, with more Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 1, The Will to Power, as the subtitles in, in German is translated What from what I was told. You know, in the last episode, we, we made it to the bridge and gave our report about Cosmos. As you would expect, they're not too happy. Well, at least C C Commander Cherenkov wasn't really pleased at the fact that Cosmos is not up and functioning, but the captain was pretty much understanding. In fact, he doesn't want Cosmos to be, be a last effort, effort at all. They want... You want this mission to go well without being attacked by the, by the Gnosis. Anyway, um, off camera I said, oh yeah, and, and he said, we've got the rest of the day off, so we're going to go back to our, our quarters and rest. Now, off camera I did say I was going to do a little bit grinding. As you can see, <laughs> Xion went up by, what was the last level I ended the episode on? I think, yeah, she's a level three. And yeah, she's a, lot, she's a little bit more powerful than she was before. Not only that, now originally, normally I would try to, if I was crazy enough, I would actually go to level 20. But but I was realizing the whole time that when I was training, she wasn't really getting any EP P points. Like you see, she has really low EP points compared to her S points, or skill points, or attack points, or ether points, I should say. So, yeah. Anyway, um, and with that, I went ahead and let her use, uh, use some of her TP points on her skills. As you can see, she has a skill, easy C on the skill as high, shock blade and, and spell rate. Now, I didn't explain this, but if you, if you were if you're able to, excuse me, if you're able to garner enough enough TP points and use them on on your on your, your tech attacks, and you increase the speed to high, you'll be able to use them on your second attack. So if she unused, for example, um, her first type, which was Knuckle, I believe. Then her second option, she can use either, either, what was the second attack after Knuckle? Uh, Stun Shock and Double Kick or something like that. I forget. And but she also have a third option. Now she can use Shock Blade if she wants to, which is a tech attack. So that's pretty good. And so yeah, I would, I would, I would always advise to try to can get your tech attacks um, speed to high as fast as possible. But not only that, they can increase your boost cage by crap ton, they can also deal a lot of damage to help you out in the battle. And I pretty much just amped up, <laughs> amped up spell rate because this is going to be her one of the very few ether attacks she'll get in the game. So it's best to power this up as much as, as possible, especially when fighting airborne bosses. Well, you're going to be using her on, on hand foot and not on aches. Anyway, um. Yeah, and the rest of TP I just distribute towards her stats. But you, you can use your TP to distribute towards the stats and increase a little bit more than what it normally would be if you didn't really bother with the TP points when she levels up. And you can see everything from HP is maximized. Now, it'll only say this for now, but when she gets to another level, you'll be able to distribute them even further. But for now, this is like the cap she can get right now. Um. Skills, I didn't really do much. I just got our set, set eyes. Now that's a skill that will only be set if you extract enough points from her scope, which she has equipped for some reason. I don't know why she has that one. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I should, I should unequip, unequip that. Because later on in the game, we will be meeting gets uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be introduced to more people, but they won't have the scope ability. So, Xi'an will always be able to scan an, an enemy's HP even without using the scope. Anyway, so yeah, she went through a, a little bit of upgrade and let us rest. That was a grave mistake, Cherenkov. I believe I already warned you about the dangers of the Zohar. I don't have any, anything to drink to. Great. I'll do it this episode. Yes, sir. Oh, and sorry over here, like, no rattling outside. It's raining. That the <laughs> it's like really raining. Rain, rain, really hard right now. That's a trivial matter. Forget it. The problem is that those people touched the Zohar and then vanished. I think it's raining all day, actually. And no. In addition to that, <coughs> you're still transporting it while exposed to normal space. Because of that, we've had to move the plan up two phases. We can't have the Zohar falling into the government's hands. Wait, 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 wait. But Two isn't Trigon part of the government? But why are you? We picked up local UMN. Oh, okay, so I guess Trigon is a spy then. The fleet is column jumping towards the position of your convoy. 
They'll cross your vector in five hours, 22 minutes. No, it can't be. Them? I oh, no. You, you've made a grave mistake. We dispatched reinforcements an hour ago. So keep it safe at all costs until they arrive. W will they make it in time? Just keep it safe until they arrive. I don't care if you have to send it into hyperspace by itself. Fortunately for you, your ship is carrying that weapon. What, Cosmos? I don't know what Vector's up to, but take advantage of the situation if you can. Excuse me, sir, but they haven't even started field testing it yet. It's too risky. You, of all people, should be cognizant of its power. I don't care if it's unstable. Make them hurry. But, but, sir... That is all. Commander, wait! Commander Margulis! Okay, so it seemed like Trango was more reasonable than we thought. The reason why he was barking at Shion is because, well, Margulis is barking at him. So, perhaps Trango isn't as bad as I thought he was. And not, not to mention we found out that he's a spy from the organization that Marcus is from. Like I told you before, I can't go anywhere until my project stabilizes. Don't you remember? You know how long you've been saying that? I haven't seen you for two years now. You could at least come home for our parents' memorial. Where's your sense of filial duty? Memorial? Oh, come on. Why are you trying to resurrect obscure ancient rituals? Wait a minute. You've been reading those weird old books again, haven't you? I swear you're so <laughs> obsessed face. with those precious books of yours. That is none of your business, thank you very much. Uh, how many times must I tell you not to quibble about my way of Yeah, you can life. tell these two are brothers and sisters. <laughs> Only a brother says we're arguing like this. That's just a stupid old hobby for you. Just remember. Don't expect me to take you in when you're old, senile, and all alone. That's terribly rude of you, Xion. Don't worry about me. Just promise me you'll come home this year, okay? If you don't... All right, all right, when I get some time off. Look, gotta run. See ya. Hey, wait. I'm not going to let you dodge the question again. Hello? Hello? Click. <laughs> Hung up on his face. Honestly... I wish he consider my feelings for a change. Now that person was Xion's older brother. Um, I won't say his name just yet. For those who are watching this game, watching this and know who it is, you know who it is, obviously. But for those who never heard this series, we're gonna wait till the second episode, or you can just we'll look up on Wiki. It's not really that important. But I'd like to like to keep my viewers in suspense. If that ever, if it, if it, <laughs> if it ever works. Anyway, um. Now this well let's go not yet. Now this is your last chance to go around the ship and do whatever you want to. I don't really see a reason to own. Oh, you, you, you can also walk around with Shion without her jacket. You, you can actually go to the eggs hangar and do some more training with this, and she'll be like this too. So that's a pretty cool cosmetic change. So yeah, but like I say, once you can go back around the ship and talk to anyone, I don't think there's any missable things here. I mean, the only thing I suggest doing is probably the to drill, I guess. But other than that, there's nothing else you need to do. So let's just go to sleep. Now, from what I heard, I heard they were actually cheating when they when they say, like when Marcus said, for example, that he sent a convoy that's going to be here for five hours. Because I would think in in well in the real world that would take like years to get from one place to another in space. Yes, is to take a day cat nap. That's what what I was told. My brother told me when I was young. I was like, wait, really? So it's not like that. It'll probably take them years to get from one place to another. Not to mention, it it, it helps that I was watching. I was re recently watching Dragon Ball Z Kai, and it was the episode right after Goku, well, rather Gohan defeated Vegeta after he escaped, and they were trying to think of a plan to get to Namek. And Bulma says it was take him for take him quite a few years to get to Namek. With the technology they got, they got in, in the DBZ world. But anyway, <laughs> enough of Dragon Ball Z. Not to mention my hands hurting from playing Xenoverse. I forgot how how much <laughs> how much my hand coordination needs to be on tack to play that game. 
that I've not played that game in a good while. It was actually pretty fun though, I'm not gonna lie. But anyway, we're on Xeon Saga, not Xenoverse. <clears throat> and someone else is here apparently. Oh lord. Now I wonder who that is. Oh, she's having a bad dream, or a dream. And you might want to look behind, Shion. Of course not, you're asleep. Ugh. Yes, yeah, something's about to go down. You know, you know, Jeff just had that feeling. I can't help but to feel that. <laughs> something's going to go down, it's going to get real pretty soon. It's quiet, too quiet. Oh God, I have a bad feeling about this. Why am I scared? Uh oh, is shit getting real? Oh God, no, no, ah, oh, that one. You're all still here? Hey, Ellen. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going? We're trying to pinpoint today's problem, among other things. What about you? Oh, Commander Cherenkov gave me a piece of his mind earlier. <laughs> Ouch. Glad to see you survived. That guy's relentless. You act like a bunch of college kids. And what, is Vector run by a Girl Scout? <laughs> just went on and on. It's funny, whenever he says... That line, it must remind me of a character he played. Right. Seriously. But it isn't right to have the chief taking all the I like Dave Wittenberg. I haven't been hearing I haven't been hearing most of his work lately. In the PS in the Still, late PS3 era and PS4 era. I wonder why he seems so nervous. Except for Naruto when he plays the voice of Kakashi. And unfortunately he does not do the voice of Oh god, what's going on with Cosmos? But like I was saying, he does not do the voice of Teddy no longer. Not to say the new voice of Teddy is horrible. I just prefer Dave Wamberg's version because, well, that was the original Persona 4. But I digress. Different strokes for different folks. Now exiting the asteroid field. That's excellent. Prepare to gate jump. Aye, aye, Captain. All ships entering approach. 19 minutes, 30 seconds to column area. UMN, pulse received. Current coordinates locked. Transfer vector correction to 103. Target, Athens column. Uh-oh. Captain, a warning signal. It can't be. Is it them? No, sir. The detection system is silent. How's it look on your side? Nothing over here, either. Are you sure it's not an error? I hope so. No, no it's not. What is this? What's going on? Sir, I don't think an external source is causing this warning signal. Then what's causing it? I'll run a search. I've pinpointed the anomaly. It's inside the ship, Sector 3. Well, it makes sense if it isn't external, it has to be internal. But where? Wait a minute, it says Cosmos. Is she the reason? It's Cosmos! Well, yeah, I just said that. Oh, Lord. What's going on? Is Cosmos actually causing all this? That's impossible! Hey, what the hell's going on? I don't know! It all happened so quickly! We're checking it out right now! Cosmos warning status, level one! The bindings are off. Damn it! It's booting up on its own. Oh god. The countdown has started as well. What the hell? Why all of a sudden? Yeah, 
Yeah, Xion is the one person that needs to know about this. Xion, you might want to wake up. This is probably similar to the incident that happened two years ago. Yeah, Shion, you might want to hide till the back to Ghost Mode as fast as possible. Hurry, contact Alan as soon as you can. Damn you, services! <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> now? Damn you, service connection. I don't think so. Wait, that's impossible. Cosmos isn't supposed to wake up unless I enter the activation code from this terminal. That's the failsafe we integrated. This, this can't be happening. Not again. Well, what exactly happened? Uh, oh crap, she can't make it. Damn it. It's really happening. It's exactly the same as the last time. Can't be that bad, and oh. Uh -huh. Oh god, she killed Kevin. Well, it seemed like we just found out what happened two years ago. So I guess Shion was one of the lucky ones. Oh no, what is it now? What is it now? Detecting a large scale spatial distortion ahead of us. An enormous mass is gating out. Impossible. We're still outside the column area. That's. The UMN geodesic structure is being breached. The target! It appears to be interacting with the UMN somehow. It's being hacked. Oh god, the network. That's possible. Massive gravity fluctuations. Surface anomalies forming in space time. Impossible. That defies all laws of physics. Shooting mass. The numbers are completely inconsistent. I can't get a clear reading. Whatever it is, it's huge. The amplitude. The hell? It's like a tidal wave. The readings are increasing. It's entering normal space. Captain. Captain. Straight ahead. There it is. Nooses. Yep. They finally arrived on the scene. This is a battle that I've ever seen one before. Oh god damn it, Virgil. Well, can I even hit them because they're transparent? Yeah, they think so. Looks like 
firearms are useless. You might want to run. Well, well, I can understand them still fighting, but if it's not doing anything, what's the point of staying there? I know their job is to protect the civilians that are on the ship, but still. Ah, oh, damn it. Dude, they're not working. <laughs> it's not working, dude. You might want to run. Ah, oh, damn it. Now what the? What the hell? Oh! Run, fool! Run! Great. What's going on? Obviously, the noses have evaded the ship, Sean. You can see one right in front of you. All right, I'm gonna take you. Nope. <laughs> ah, rapist. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna end the episode here. Anyway, yeah, we'll take on that notice in the next episode. So next up time, let's play. <laughs> I was almost out to know for a second there. It's the Osaka episode one, the will up to power. We are going to be. We're trying to make, we're trying to maneuver our way the best we can without coming into contact with the Gnosis to get to Cosmos as fast as we possibly can. So, until then, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode.